Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. It is June 18th, Tuesday, 2019. I am in Phoenix, Arizona, like I have been for, uh, what's it been? Almost two weeks that I've been here. And it is still warm, and it has yet to rain, so it's like a desert out here. Ha, 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 because it is. There's cactus growing everywhere. So, uh, Welcome to uh, everyone. Welcome Tina Marie Kirkpatrick, my compadre from College Station, Texas. Welcome Shane. Welcome Sarah Green from Louisiana. Welcome Suzanne. Welcome. It is uh, again another sunny day. Now, I always like to share a little bit about maybe what happened the day before or this uh, the morning before I do my Facebook Lives. So, this morning I wake up, uh, I think it's right before five o'clock a.m. local time here. And I was considering going for a walk further up the mountain today. That's not too far from here. It's like, I don't know, a mile maybe, or a mile and a half. The North uh, Phoenix Mountain, I believe is the name of it. And there's a couple of clusters of mountains that are there. There's a bunch of antennas up at the top. So yesterday I climbed to the, the mountain that is like closest to downtown Phoenix, which is again, I don't know, probably 20 miles or something from here. You can see it in the distance. So today I decided to climb up even steeper. And uh, as I was climbing it, there was, uh, well, there was, there's probably a good 50 people that were climbing. You know, I think that they do it on a regular basis here, the locals, and it's a good workout. You know, if you've ever climbed mountains, but you have to be careful because they have a lot of jagged rocks that you could kill yourself with if you slip and fall and hit your head. Very sharp, jagged, kind of maybe even, I don't know if it's called shale or not, but um, you have to be careful. And again, I'm wearing gym shoes when I'm climbing. I don't have any hiking boots. I used to travel with them, but they just took up space and I didn't travel up treacherous mountains like I do, do now here. So I decided to climb up higher, and as I'm going up higher and higher, you know, the sun is coming up, um, and it's just beautiful. You know, the temperatures aren't 100 degrees yet. They were still probably maybe 78 or something. And when I get to the top, um, almost to the very, very top, I'm up within, I don't know, probably 100 feet of an almost vertical climb. I mean, it's pretty steep to get to when you get to the very top. Well, there was a park ranger that came up and he was asking me, you know, where I was from. And so I'm talking to him about that. And then he asked me what I did. I always love that when people ask me what I do. So I always tell him I used to sell software to banks and he used to work for Intuit and they're familiar with the name of Intuit, TurboTax and uh, um, Quicken and QuickBooks. And so then I told him what I do now. And then I told him about uh, my son and praying for him, and then I showed him the picture of the before and the after, and he was just like, oh my gosh, blown away. He was like, we need more people like you. And I'm like, well, that's what I'm doing, is I'm trying to train people around the world to go through normal deliverance, you know? And so it was neat to have a conversation with the park ranger. He was very uh, open to what I was saying and very uh, uh, thankful. Um, and I asked him, I said, how often do you climb this mountain? He said, every day. I was like, really? I'm like, that's awesome. You know, and, and again, you have to take breaks as you're climbing up because it uh, takes a lot out of you. You know, some of the places are very, very treacherous, especially when you're going downhill because you can slip and then slide down 20 feet, you know, and uh, get hurt very badly. <laughs> so anyway, he was keeping people on the right path too. I noticed that there were some people trying to get off the path into a sub path that's not real. And so it was nice that he was helping people to remind them to stay on the right path, which is very symbolic of what the Lord does to us. If we ever get off the path into some area, it could be more dangerous for us. And that's what the park ranger was trying to do is to keep people on the right path. You know, that's what the Lord wants to do. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Keep us on the right path. And that kind of leads into what I'm going to be talking about today. I've not talked about it before because the Holy Spirit's not allowed me to. You know, and, and I'll share this again. We're talking about understanding the Kundalini spirit and how it operates in the church. And what is interesting is that I saw it operating within a church that I was attending with my second wife. 
and I saw people operating in it, but I didn't know what it was called. You know, a lot of you may have seen this operating in your church or in other churches maybe that you've attended, and you just weren't sure what it was, you know? And so I'm gonna describe what it is in more detail. I'm gonna describe some of the characteristics, how it operates in individual people, you know, and how it can cause us to get off the path of where the true Holy Spirit wants us to stay on. You know, the counterfeit Holy Spirit, which is really what the Kundalini Spirit represents, it looks good. It looks like you're in tune with the Lord. It looks like, you know, you are uh, enjoying yourself, but there is a, a path that it takes you down that you don't want to go to. You don't want to go on that path. And so it's important for us to realize exactly what that, that is. You know, I, I remember going to this uh, church with my ex-wife and I just felt something in my spirit that didn't feel good. It was like I knew something was off about the people and how they were behaving and yet I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know why. I didn't know why I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel good about it. I felt like there was something that was not right, that it just it wasn't pure, it wasn't the authentic Holy Spirit. And yet they seemed like they were having a good time, laughing a lot and uh, uh, falling down. You know, there's, 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 there's the true getting slain in the spirit, which I have felt. I have actually prayed for people and seen them fall, fall backwards and get slain in the spirit. And then oftentimes the Holy Spirit, then the Lord will speak to you when you are truly slain in the spirit. And then there's more of this fake Kundalini spirit and what it does. And uh, I'm gonna point this out because what I noticed is when I was attending this church, it just didn't feel right. You know, and, and they oftentimes would like get in my face <laughs> and try to make me like do what they wanted. And it just wasn't really the true Holy Spirit. I knew that it was, but I didn't know what it was because I didn't, uh, I'm like, they didn't teach us that <laughs> at the church. So obviously you're not gonna learn if you go to a church that doesn't talk about some of these things that will get you off the wrong, into the wrong path. So, and oftentimes they would like look down upon you if you didn't act the same way that they did, like make you feel guilty or condemned that maybe you were too religious. And I was like, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm not too religious, you know. I like to have fun, I like to laugh, have a good time, enjoy my life, but if it's, if it's not jiving, if it's causing me some, some uncomfortableness within and, and, and I'm not you know, being affected by any type of a internal type of a demonic spirit, then normally it's coming from the external. And then I have to actually say, okay, what is, what is it about this that doesn't seem quite right? So um, I'm gonna go through this. This is what the Kundalini spirit, um, what, it, what it is, I and mean, it's been around for like over a thousand years it's like an occult type practice that had uh, started within the Hindu Eastern religious system. Again, the Hindus have like millions of gods that uh, obviously are not good. Um, the New Age um, is, is very strong in, in this Kundalini spirit. It's, it's basically trying to promise you that you'll, you'll be able to have a new awakening of wisdom and enlightenment and uh, energy. And it'll be kind of like, you know, taking part of the tree of life, opening up your third eye is what its goal is, is to make you become more like God. And, but in a bad way, you know, there's a, there's a lot of it that's very similar to what the Holy Spirit truly does within us. But yet it's, it's uh, focusing more on what what man can do to become God, which is not good. You know, obviously we want to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to us, but we don't want it all to be about us and ourselves. Self, it really comes down to the self. So the Kundalini Spirit is a counterfeit Holy Spirit that wants to think that you are going to learn and know things that God knows and have a spiritual awakening to be like God. It wants you to feel a sense of euphoria, but it isn't pure. And uh, what you'll notice is the, uh, the spirits of Kundalini really start to activate within a person as soon as they start the worship music. You'll oftentimes notice people, they may, be, you know, they may come down in, in the front of the church, and again, I'm not saying that every church is like this, but I've seen it operate in multiple churches throughout the United States in my travels, and it, it really starts to when the worship music starts. 
And uh, so I'm going to describe some of the signs of this so that you can discern it and understand, and, and you probably have seen this in, in various uh, churches. Uh, but number one, people will have an inappropriate laughter. Now there's appropriate laughter, there's appropriate joy. You know, I have fun, I love to laugh, you know, when it's appropriate. Um, but oftentimes you'll notice that the laughing um, that you'll hear, it can appear, I mean, it's, at times I've heard it in churches where it appears more witch-like and cackling in individuals. Um, it manifests that way sometimes. Um, also, it can manifest in where people are essentially falling down um, in a state of drunkenness, but it's just not, you can tell it's more, it's not pure. It's not the way that a person normally would get slain in the spirit. Because normally when I'm seeing it, you know, when it's off, when Holy Spirit's operating, the person falls down, you know, falls backward or whatever, and then they're, they're quiet, and then they hear the Holy Spirit speak to them some truth, something that they need to actually hear. But it seems like when uh, people are operating in the Kundalini spirit, that they're falling down laughing and they're not receiving really anything from the Holy Spirit. So, and you also notice that the people love to touch other people to try to infect them with that. Like they try to bring you into it. Like if you're not participating in the same thing, then there's something wrong with you. Try to put a guilt trip on you to make you come under that. Number two, we see it uh, operating oftentimes in, in an inappropriate tremors and convulsions and involuntary jerks uh, of a person that distracts others and causes them to feel uncomfortable. Now, I, I know I've felt the Holy Spirit on me um, at times where I do feel like electrical jolts that are on me. You know, I've had that happen. You know, when I'm driving, I can feel the Holy Spirit presence that can take my breath away. Um, if I do get uh, slain in the Spirit and it's the Holy Spirit, I can also feel that at times. But you'll, just, you'll discern that it just seems to be a little off, that there just seems to be a little bit more self, look at me, look at me, a uh, little bit of pride. Well, obviously there is pride that's a part of this. Number three, oftentimes you will feel, if you're operating in this, a little of an itching or a tingling sensation, a crawling sensation, especially around your arms, your legs, heat and cold, uh, maybe even in your back and your spine. Number four, I've, I've also witnessed this a couple of times where people will bark like dogs, meow like cats, have their tongue twitching like a snake, growling like an animal. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not really the Holy Spirit. That is the, the Kundalini Spirit, and it is not normal to bark like a dog or meow like a cat, you know. And they act like it's all fun and funny and, and fun and games when it's not. Um, number five, the goal of the Kundalini Spirit is really to, to stop the true Holy Spirit from flowing and operating in people. You know, if, if people are desiring to be ministered to, then, I, and I, I saw this just actually recently, uh, there was a, a uh, young adults pastor that had asked me to pray for a woman who had the Jezebel spirit. He knew that she had it. She was like 21 years of age. And... Um, it was at the end of the ser of the service, and uh, I took her aside. It was, we were in the sanctuary, but I took her aside to the side uh, because there were there were a bunch of people that had fallen out on the floor. And as I'm trying to speak to her to get her to understand the concept between the father wounds, the mother wounds, sexual violations, and then the Jezebel spirit, she was listening to what I was saying, and she was like, "Oh my gosh." You know, I've had this my whole life. What you're describing is exactly the voices that I'm hearing and so forth. And yeah, I want delivered. So it was really a, a sweet um, tr truth that she was receiving. Well, there was like four girls that came running over and they fell down like literally a few feet from us and started laughing in a, in a, in a non-Holy Spirit way that was really distracting her from being able to listen to what I was trying to say. And the Lord showed me, he said, that's not right. That's not the true Holy Spirit. That is the enemy within them trying to distract the woman to steal from her so that she cannot get delivered. I mean, literally, they were a few feet away. We were way over on the side of this church. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, Lord. So I'm, pr I'm trying to pray to bind the spirits uh, for manifesting in them so that the woman could listen to me and so that she could get delivered. So fortunately, they calmed down after a minute or two. And then I was able to complete the process of deliverance with her and she got set free. I mean, it was amazing. She actually started to 
manifest a little bit. I was holding her hands so that she wouldn't, you know, fall down and so forth. And uh, she got free. She felt it leave. And she's like, thank you so much. Thank you so much because now I feel lighter. I feel peace. You know, so she got delivered. But yet the spirits of Kundalini were trying to interfere within these four girls. So, um, so I'll say that. Uh, da, 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 da. Number six, they act like the spirit will act in people will act like they love everybody, but it's somewhat of a seductive overtone to the feeling of that love. It's not real pure, you know, and they'll get in your face to make you feel uncomfortable. Number seven, if you're operating the Kundalini spirit, you will often have vivid sexual dreams that will come in to you, you know, incubus, succubus type spirits. Number eight, when you leave the confines of the church, so once you're done with the music playing and so forth, then you will have oftentimes a lot of confusion on a day-to-day -day basis in your life due to hearing the demonic voices in your head that will cause you not to be able to focus. You'll hear blasphemous thoughts that will come in from the enemy. They're like, what? Where did that come from? Now that you know, will make you feel you know, condemned, but that's the enemy. That's the demonic spirits trying to because they have gained access through those spirits. Number nine, you will oftentimes have, suffer from pains and blockages in the back, in your back or in your neck. Number 10, you'll experience oftentimes digestion problems in your stomach area. Um, you'll have unexplained sickness and disease because this, uh, it's like a serpent spirit, Kundalini, will start to wrap and coil around the base of your spine. Normally, I think they say it wraps like three and a half times around your spine, so it can cause stomach issues and digestion problems for you. So, Kundalini, so how does it have a legal right to come upon people? You know, ultimately, I'm going to talk about how it came over from essentially India, how it came over essentially a lot of times they came in um, via yoga, which we'll talk about yoga. I think a lot of us know that yoga is not good, but there's a lot of people in the church that don't know that are operating, that are practicing that, and how it can actually bring in this kundalini as under the guise of a new awakening, you know, to becoming more like God, which is not good. Um, and then once it got into America, then it started working its way into the church. And now it's in a lot of churches. So anyways, these are some, these are some of the legal rights, uh, ways that kundalini can come upon a person. People who carry the spirit will try to touch you during worship, put their hands on you, you know, but during worship or after the sermon. So that's why it's really, it's a challenge. You know, I mean, because most people want to be prayed for. Can I pray for you? It's hard to say no, because then you feel like you're going to offend them. And oftentimes they get offended. <gasps> what? You're not going to let me pray for you? Oh my gosh, how bad you are. So they try to make you feel guilty so they can touch you and put their hands upon you. So it's really, 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 you know, you have to be careful with who touches you because that's one way that that spirit can start to affect you. Um, there can be generational curses that comes down the bloodline, any type of involvement in the new age. And again, you know, I have a friend that used to be a new age and, and she came out of it because she was seeking the truth, seeking the Lord. And that was Robia, Robia Scott. And uh, she talks about this in her testimony, so it's public. And uh, she, she started out in the Catholic Church, and then she got into New Age, and then she got freed from all that, and now she's all Holy Spirit. And she uh, knows the dangers of yoga. She used to be involved in yoga, and she's, she talks about this, you know, uh, openly. But she said at the core of it, she was seeking the truth. So most people that are operating in New Age and mysticism and stuff, they are wanting to experience things that are supernatural, things that are real, and so that's their goal. So it's the Lord and the Holy Spirit, the true Holy Spirit, that wants to reveal the truth to them so that they can come out of the deception. But it's hard to see. You know, if you're not taught this, it's hard to see. That's why a lot of people that follow my ministry, when they understand the characteristics of Jezebel and Leviathan and Ahab, they can see it. Their eyes are open. They're like, that's why that person's behaving like that. I'm like, yeah. Just like when I went to that church, it's no longer in existence, put it that way. The church in Indianapolis, the Lord shut it down because a lot of the people were operating in Jezebel, Leviathan, Ahab, and the Kundalini spirit. It wasn't pure. And uh, the Lord actually used me to confront the leaders. They mocked me and wouldn't listen. 
you know, and then the Lord shut it down. I had a dream and I saw the church go from 200 people to 20 people and that happened within a year. And um, a lot of the pastors there are no longer pastors anymore. So uh, witchcraft, if we're involved in any type of witchcraft, seances, seances tarot cards, um, acupuncture, yoga, um, Reiki massage, horoscopes, even certain types of oils, you know, we need to get our healing, of course, from the Lord and know our authority. It's very, very important for us to know that. So I know many people believe and think that yoga is fine. I did a teaching on uh, the dangers of yoga back in February. I'm not going to actually concentrate, you know, a whole lot of this about yoga, but um, I will, will touch on this. So, but even uh, like a lot of times people say, well, I'm only doing yoga for the exercise. I'm like, okay, well, listen, I go, well, I exercise. I stretched, I used to run marathons, so I did stretches a lot, but I didn't do any poses. It's the poses that are the danger. You know, you gotta, you know, you, and again, anything that's really related to yoga is not good because it says that even the Hindus and the Buddhists that do the yoga say that you cannot separate the spirits um, saying that you're just doing the exercises. You cannot separate from those demonic spirits. You know, that's gonna open up your chakras in your spine which I'm gonna go through and describe what the chakras are you know, in your spine because it tries to rise up and go from chakra to chakra within your spine and get higher and higher and ultimately take over inside of your head and inside of your brain and uh, do bad things, essentially. So Kundalini causes us to have pride and arrogance because why? We want to become like God. We wanna know everything. Nothing wrong with wanting to know you know, what the Lord wants for our lives and so forth, but it's when we have the desire to become so prideful and arrogant, saying, I know all these things, I know everything, you know. That's why the Lord oftentimes, in part, will share this or that with everyone, or with, with various people. So, uh, Kundalini Spirit causes us to self-exalt. You know, look at me, look at me, look at me. It becomes idolatry. Kundalini promises bliss and new energy and wisdom, but slowly will turn on the person to destroy them. That's what it wants to do. Again, we know the Hindu religion has millions of demons. Kundalini is a serpent, power and energy. Uh, starts out in the lower sacrum, the, the base of the spine coils around the base three and a half times and tries to work its way up your spine from your chakra to chakra to essentially explode in your brain. Um, so, um, I'm going to read, this is a blog from Jonas Clark. I know Jonas has a, a good um, a ministry that he also talks about Jezebel, Leviathan, Ahab, but it goes into a little more detail. So this is from Jonas Clark's website, jonasclark.com. And uh, I like how he puts this. It says, evil spirits such as Kundalini, yoga, and the occult mysticism are dangerous spirits entering Christian churches in North America. These spirits are prophetic, offer visions, dreams, and feelings of peace. They can even look like the Holy Spirit. So only the most discerning of people are actually though able to see it. It's a counterfeit Holy Spirit. So he says, traveling has provided me an opportunity to experience many things while seeing the ministry of the Holy Spirit in lots of different circumstances. I've seen some things recently that look like the Holy Spirit, but they're not. There is a counterfeit Holy Spirit entering Christian churches. And this is going on throughout the world, not just North America, but this is, he's been traveling around North America more. One of my first experiences was in a particular church service. The minister was preaching, praying, and prophesying. It looked like the Holy Spirit, and his nine gifts of the Holy Spirit was moving, but something was wrong. There was a clash in my spirit and I just couldn't enter into the service. My spirit was not in agreement. I even felt like my spirit was warring against something unseen. It didn't make sense to my head because everything looked right. As the service progressed, I stayed in prayer, then suddenly I saw it. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes. And I saw another spirit on this preacher. 
It was one of the highest occult spirits I have ever seen. It was a serpent-looking reptile curled around this man's spine and laying across his shoulders. It was difficult to see because it camouflaged itself, becoming transparent at times. Later, I asked the intercessors with me if they had a witness to what we saw and heard. Like me, they confirmed that the preaching was good, but something was wrong. They just didn't know what it was. I told them what the Lord showed me. This person is a popular Christian speaker, writer, and television guest in America. I was very grieved in my spirit after this experience. This man was not flowing in the Holy Ghost, but another spirit. I believe the name of this counterfeit Holy Ghost is Kundalini. Kundalini is a New Age serpent spirit. It says, let's explore the spirit, where it came from and how it entered America. Please ask the Holy Spirit to help you see its deception. Don't just take my word for what's happening. Pray and do your own research. Uh, so he says, the Kundalini spirit gained access to the Western world from India through New Age teaching. It is popularly known as yoga. Don't for a minute think that yoga is harmless. Yoga is an inherent part of Hindu philosophy which teaches man and nature are one with divinity. By the time you finish reading this material, you will see it for what it is, a destructive demonic spirit. Although the Kundalini Yoga is popular, every Christian needs to understand that yoga is a forbidden practice. Scripture declares, thou shalt have no other gods before me, Exodus 23. Kundalini is an antichrist spiritual counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that all Christ's Holy Spirit-filled intercessors across America will see what I saw. To bind the serpent spirit, cast it out, and for every Bible preacher and teacher to discern this spirit and close the church doors to its occult operations. Back in 1967, that's when I was born, January 2nd. Back in 1967, the musical Hair opened with the song Aquarius, with the memorable line, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Remember that? The song swept the country and ushered in an awareness of the Aquarian age concept. The song also defined the dawning of a new age with the lyrics, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. Remember Woodstock, Woodstock, New York? Show you here. There's a picture, a bunch of people, hippies <laughs> that are laying around in Woodstock, New York. So the Woodstock concert in New York in 1969 drew over 500,000 youth across America and was billed as an Aquarian exposition, three days of peace and music. New Age yoga teacher, Yogi Raj Sri Swami Sachindananda <laughs> opened the festival with prayer. His real name is C.K. Ramaswamy, grounder, an Indian yoga teacher and spiritual master. He was also the author of many spiritualist books on Hatha Yoga and influenced many, including the popular artist Peter Max. Veteran actress turned New Age teacher Shirley MacLaine came along in the early 70s teaching reincarnation, trans channeling, and transcendental meditation. She writes, when I walked across Spain on the pilgrimage called the Santiago de Compostela Camino, I encountered myself in a former life. I discovered a part of me that led to a greater understanding of myself. One of the common themes amongst New Age teachers is the focus on self. McLean later wrote, out on a limb, 
a popular book outlining her New Age awakening. Christians know there is no such thing as reincarnation. Scripture says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. The Beatles. Remember the Beatles? Here's a picture of the Beatles at Rishikesh. Okay. The Beatles were an English rock band formed in Liverpool, England in 1960. When they arrived in America at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, they were greeted by an estimated 3,000 fans. They gave their first live U.S. television performance two days later on The Ed Sullivan Show, watched by approximately 74 million viewers. There is no question that the Beatles influenced a generation of America's youth. The Beatles were also drawn into the New Age. In 1968, they traveled to Rishikesh, India. So that's the picture I just showed you. Attending an advanced transcendental meditation training session at the ashram of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi that they later adopted as their guru. Did you know that? This event drew worldwide attention and is credited with introducing the West to Indian spirituality. While there, they wrote many songs later recorded on the Beatles' White Album and Abbey Road. Guitarist George Harrison wrote My Sweet Lord in 1970, a song about the Hindu god Krishna. John Lennon later wrote songs like Imagine, released in 1971. The lyrics were Antichrist saying, Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. We saw the Beatles transform music with a new sound that introduced a new spirit into the country. Harmless child stuff? Hardly. Later came Oprah Winfrey, whom America wrongfully thought was a Christian. She is a New Age proponent and host, well, was host, of the highest rated talk show in TV history, as seen by 15 million viewers daily in 132 countries. Winfrey started her own New Age church because she believed in a mystical New Age God calling it a force. She said, quote, the force, I call it God, unquote. Trusting in the spiritual self, yoga beliefs, is nothing more than a perverted form of religious humanism, cloaked in spiritualism. Oprah often weaved Bible verses in her teachings, but clearly held to a misdirected view of God. If God does not direct a person through his word, then the only thing left are humanistic inner voices, twisted antinomian mysticism or familiar spirits to provide guidance. On one program with New Age authors Betty Eady, Sophie Burnham, and Daniel Brinkley, Winfrey alluded to the book Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, saying one of the biggest mistakes humans make is to believe that there is only one way. She said, there are many diverse paths leading to what you call God. A Christian in the audience corrected her, saying that Jesus was the only way to God. The panel became upset. Oprah responded, there couldn't possibly be only one way. Does God care about your heart or whether you called his son Jesus? The point is that man cannot save himself. He needs a savior. Only Jesus Christ can fill that role. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Scripture confirmed that Oprah was wrong. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4, 12. Others say Yogi Bhajan, whose full name was Harb Hajan Singh Khalsa Yogi Ji, brought kundalini yoga to America after visiting California in 1969. I'm gonna get a drink here. I'm getting feisty because I'm in the desert. All right, he declared, I did not come to collect students, but to train teachers. And quote, seeing God in all, unquote, as the theme of his kundalini research institute. 
That's the name of it, Kundalini Research Institute. In the spring of 1969, soon after Singh had begun teaching in Los Angeles, a hit medley, Aquarius, Let the Sunshine In, was topping the music charts and being played everywhere. The performers, the fifth dimension, happened to be signed to a record label owned by one of his students and his green card sponsor, musician and entrepreneur Johnny Rivers. Rivers wrote the song Secret Agent Man, Memphis, and Baby I Need Your Lovin'. Remember that? The LA Times said his students flocked to him. Women so adored him. It became an honor just to wash his feet. Ew. Men longed for his approval. They trusted him to arrange their marriages and select their careers. There are many other gurus, quote, godmen, unquote, involved in bringing demonic Hindu spiritualism into North America. But this is good for an introduction to false Christ yoga origins. Yoga is conditioning a new generation in becoming acceptable, offered as a means for weight loss, mental clarity, physical fitness, and a harmless path to inner peace and harmony. You know, this is even available in certain churches around America. They actually allow people to do yoga within the church. And you're like, what? You know, and some of them call them Christian yoga. It's like, listen, <laughs> we don't need to have any attachment to anything that says yoga. You know, we can do exercising, we can do stretching, we can do, you know, what needs to be done, but uh, we don't have to do, when we shouldn't do anything that has to do with yoga. Even schools are buying yoga mats, promoting yoga ed, and exposing our nation's children to its demonic deception. Today, everything is acceptable in the public square except Christianity. Yes, yoga is demonic teaching that is sweeping the country. Unlike yoga teaching, man is not and can never be God, nor can man save himself from the penalty for sin. Scripture declares, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 Yes, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 To find one's inner God self is finding nothing. A common trait among competitive yoga schools is the focus on transcending to a higher state of being or consciousness. Within the teachings, they have many, quote, ways of transcending, unquote. These various ways are simply different steps to oneness with Brahman, the Absolute One. That's why there are many different yoga schools within yoga. The term yoga comes from one of two roots. Ruj, R-U-J, meaning to be yoked together, and Yuja, Y-U-J-A, meaning concentration. The question that comes to mind is what is a yoga disciple yoking themselves with? Most schools of yoga teach a joining together with the supreme self, quote unquote, and entering an esoteric condition through self-transcendence. On the surface, we see yoga as the worship of self. In other words, you are God and only need to discover it through various methods from using energy from crystals, meditation, breathing exercises, chanting, you know, poses, or even certain dance movements. Drums and dance are used to awaken the Kundalini spirit. Um, it has, a, has a, a video here, it says, the caption on the video says, we have come to dance, awake our prayers. Prayers are not awakened, they are answered. The Christian prays to the Father in the name of Jesus. Scripture declares, quote, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you, John 15, 16. So in this video, they ask the question, where are our drums? The reply is, we are not supposed to play our drums anymore. They have been broken. The people that brought us here don't like the drums. They know the drums give us strength, so they have forbidden us to play. As a picture here, I'll show you. I'm not gonna play the video though. The chakra, now I told you I was gonna talk about the chakras. So what's the chakra mean? Chakra means wheel, spinning, rotating, vibrating, 
or turning. In yoga, they are known as energy or force centers, capable of receiving and transmitting energy. There are seven chakra energy centers known as the root, belly, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Every chakra has its own image. The dance movements help tap into the energy in the seven chakras as the kundalini spirit rises along the spine. During the dance, the kundalini rises from chakra to chakra, causing various levels of self-realization while obtaining and releasing various spiritual occult powers known as siddhis, S-I-D-D-H-I-S. These siddhis powers include physical healings, clairvoyance, levitation, magic, spiritual experiences, and power for the control of self, others, and the forces of nature. The yoga dance progresses until the serpent spirit reaches the crown of the head, resulting in a union. Remember we talked about yoga means uh, yoking together with something, resulting in a union yoga with the self-divine. This is the yoga goal, oneness with the universe. Then it says waking kundalini. This is Laura's yogini's dance instruction. Again, this dance is used to awaken the kundalini serpent and encourage it to rise along the chakras. And they actually show them dancing on the video. And it's interesting when you watch, actually, and I'm gonna link this, so I'll, I'll send this and post this. Some of their dancing techniques, um, in fact, I might try to do this. I might try to do this. Um, if I can, open in YouTube. Yes, I'm gonna try and play this for you. Because I've noticed that some of the dancing that they actually show here kind of resembles some of the dancing that you may see with people at church. And you know, some of it looks a little bit, you know, normal, but then there's some of it looks a little bit seductive. So there you go. All righty. Let me go back. It says, the use of multiple drums as lead instruments combined with the chakra dance has found its way in some Christian churches. There we go. Is any of this taking place in your church? Those in the dance ministry need to guard themselves against chakra dancing. Yes, David danced before the Lord and dance is a form of worship. Just make sure your dance is to and for the glory of God. Not only has the Kundalini dance come into some churches, but also civic clubs, schools, hospitals, and fitness centers. Universities and colleges even offer courses in the study of yoga. This is a picture. It says, Dance the Chakras Yoga Workout. Lady, that's very uh, provocative. All right. The king of yoga schools is kundalini yoga. Kundalini also means serpent power, leads to self-awareness and self-knowledge elations. It says the following video is a new age conference showing a yoga gathering with music and dance. Listen to the words of this kundalini yoga song only after you plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. So I'm not gonna actually play this for you. It says, do not sing it. Remember the purpose of yoga is to unite with the self God. The words of the song are, I am the light of the soul, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am rich, I am, I am. The Christian knows there is only one I am that I am. His name is Christ, the only begotten son of the living God. The song wrongly declares that the singer is the I am. Repeating the song over and over is a form of chanting used to connect and release the energy of the seven chakras. Psychologist Helen Shuckman wrote The Course in Miracles in 1965. She said the material came from an inner voice. The book is full of demonic Gnostic heresies weaved in Christian terminology. The Course teaches such things as, quote, the recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. 
God's name is holy, but no holier than yours. To call upon his name is to call upon your own. I am in charge of the process of atonement." Unquote. This demonic, quote, you are God teaching is consistent within New Age circles. The Course on Miracles aired on Oprah and Friends XM Radio throughout 2008. Yoga teaches the coiled serpent is located in the spine and through chanting will awaken the serpent, kundalini awakening. Traveling up the spine until entering an esoteric state, becoming one with the God Self. In that state of union with the Self, some see visions, hear voices, prophesy, and are overcome by a sense of spiritual awareness. Paul Hood shares his kundalini awakening as a sense of energy rising from the base of my spine. He also describes a feeling of oneness with everything. I get a drink here. Dance and trans music is a common introduction to kundalini yoga. I first heard this music back in 1994 in Amsterdam. It was common in house parties. Today it draws crowds and concerts of over 50,000 youth in Europe. Today trans music and dance parties are common along with the drug ecstasy to enhance the experience. This is the annual Sunburn Festival held at Kondalim Beach, Goa, India. It draws around 5,000 people. Its purpose is to entertain and promote a sense of oneness and harmony. Uh, it says, notice the use of trans music and the kundalini dance. So again, I'll just show you the picture of it. Not gonna actually play it. So kundalini now in the Christian churches. It says, this audio is taken from a Christian church worship service full of young people. You should pay close attention to what you hear. The pastor is well known, having hundreds of ministry connections across America and Canada and has influenced thousands of Christians. The preaching has just ended and a crowd has gathered at the front. You can hear drums, music, counterfeit tongues, ambiguous, uncertain prayer. The laying on of hands is taking place and a girl just finished prophesying. She now appears to be in a spellbound condition. Let me ask some questions. Does your spirit bear witness to what you hear as Christian altar ministry? Do you think the Holy Spirit is in this service, or is the atmosphere more conducive to the manifestation of the Kundalini Spirit? Have you experienced a church service like this? Physical effects of the Kundalini Spirit. The Kundalini Spirit does not lead people to Christ. It is New Age Eastern mysticism. According to Wikipedia, these are the physical effects of the Kundalini Spirit on people. Physical effects are believed to be a sign of kundalini awakening by some, but described as unwanted side effects pointing to a problem rather than progress by others. Some of the more common signs and symptoms of an awakened kundalini include involuntary jerks, tremors, shaking, itching, tingling, and crawling sensations, especially in the arms and legs. Energy rushes or feelings of electricity circulating the body. Intense heat, sweating, or cold, especially as energy is experienced passing through the chakras, which is your back and your back. Spontaneous pranayama, which is rapid breathing or hyperventilation. Asanas, which is positions. Mudras, which is hand movements. And bandhas, stiffening of the muscles. Visions or sounds at times associated with a particular chakra, mystic visions and prophecy. Diminished sexual desire or a state of constant orgasm. Emotional purging in which particular emotions become dominant, uncontrollable for short periods of time. Depression. Pressure inside the skull and headaches. Bliss, feelings of infinite love and universal connectedness, transcendent awareness. So as you can see, some of the effects like feelings of peace, visions, and prophecy can lead the practitioner to think they have encountered the Holy Spirit. Just because a person experiences something supernatural does not mean their experience was from the Holy Spirit. Another effect not listed is demon possession. Again, all those things I read were from Wikipedia. So, As Holy Spirit-filled leaders in the Church of Christ, we need to obey the scripture that declares... Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 1 John 4, 1. We must be ever watchful servants of the Lord in our ministries, both feeding and protecting the sheep. As already said, a dangerous occult spirit is entering Christian churches across America. 
I ask Christ's ministers and prayer warriors to stand with me against the Spirit. Like thousands of you, we believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Kundalini Spirit is not the Holy Spirit. Prophets get up on the wall, watch, pray, signal, and warn. Let's close the door to this evil spirit operating in our churches. Deceptive, occult powers are now entering our churches. Never have we needed spiritual discernment like we do today. You know, amen. Spiritual warriors like you let nothing stop them from taking action to achieve greater levels of spiritual discernment. The Holy Spirit told me, this again is Jonas Clark, people cannot come out of what they cannot see. Take action in order today. <laughs> spiritual discernment belongs to you, so let's get going right now. So, well, it's funny because the Lord, not funny, but it's interesting, the Lord had not let me address this Kundalini spirit, even though I was aware of it back in like 2013, when I was attending this church and I saw it for myself. I didn't know what it was at the time, uh, but the Lord said that a lot of people need to hear this but not until the right time. So actually yesterday, the Lord told me, I want you to speak about this today. And then it was not more than five minutes later, I get a call from a leading uh, counseling slash deliverance ministry in Houston, Texas, that they do uh, a lot of deliverances. They have my books, they've taken people through and, they're, and they called and they said, you know what, Nelson, we need to have training on Kundalini spirit because we're seeing a lot of people that we're taking through deliverance that are struggling with that in the church And when are you gonna teach about this? And I'm thinking well, isn't that? Ironic I'm gonna teach about it tomorrow <laughs> so and, and people are people are coming to this uh, Large uh, counseling center group that the Lord is anointed and it's starting to explode I mean more and more people are saying we need help. We don't have peace because you see it so much when you're in the church during various churches worships and once people leave they're affected by that and they don't they, they think that okay I need to get my fix basically coming back to, to church and going through these um, you know worship I you know I love worship I love worship I feel you know I love feeling the presence of the Lord you know but it's when it starts to draw the attention away from the Holy Spirit and the Lord and it draws it to me you know and if I were to leave that and I started having all these other symptoms that depression and headaches and uh, pain and so forth that are unexplainable, various sickness diseases, you go to, go to the doctors and they can't figure it out. Well, oftentimes it's gonna be related to this Kundalini spirit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through deliverance right now for all of us. You know, we, we actually broke off witchcraft curses yesterday on the show and we've had a lot of feedback from people saying, oh my gosh, I feel so good today. I feel so light today. It feels amazing. You know, so that's what we're gonna do right now. And so I'm gonna first of all pray. I thank you, Heavenly Father, right now. I just bind any and all demonic spirits on anyone that's watching this right now, either live or recorded. I bind the enemy from you right now in the name of Jesus. And we're gonna go through just a, a very simple process of renunciation, you know, and taking account, accountability if we've done any of this. We don't want these spirits to operate. So here we go, just say, Father God, I repent for coming under any kundalini spirit. I will only honor the Holy Spirit in my life. So Lord, I ask you to take away the Kundalini spirit and any other spirit that is affecting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now I'm gonna pray. I take authority right now and I command this Kundalini spirit and any other demonic spirit that's had any legal right over you in the name of Jesus, I command you now be broken off, come off of their spines right now in Jesus' name. I send you to hell. I declare that you will never come back on them again. And we just release Heavenly Father, the true Holy Spirit, the true peace from the Lord in Jesus' name. We speak health and wholeness now. Be released upon their backs, their spines, their necks, their heads in Jesus' name. And any other sickness and diseases that have attached themselves to them in Jesus' name. 
We speak 100% health and wholeness now be released upon your people in Jesus' name. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your purification, Lord. Just burn out anything that is not of the Lord in Jesus' name and let, let us feel your peace come into us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Your purity, your righteousness, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All righty. So there you go. That's the Kundalini spirit. Now, a lot of people didn't know what that was, but maybe after understanding this more, now you can see it in other people, you know. And again, no condemnation that is not of the Lord at all. No guilt. There is conviction. The Lord and Holy Spirit is about conviction, saying, okay, yeah, I think I might have been operating in some of that. You know, maybe it was because someone had touched you at church that was operating in that. You know, they maybe needed to hear this message, obviously, if they've not. You know, we uh, at Restored Your Freedom, the goal of the ministry is to get people set free from anything that the enemy has any legal rights to torment them with so that they can truly come into their fullness in Christ. You know, we're all about the identity of who you are in Christ. But you have to get set free and delivered from the demons that have been speaking to you up here in your mind for oftentimes a lifetime. When you get set free from all that through forgiveness, through repentance, through renunciation prayers, then the Holy Spirit will fill you up completely. Then you can hear the Lord's voice clearly. Then you can walk in health, good health, you know, instead of being tormented in your body by these spirits. So uh, I know yesterday we just had a lot of positive responses from breaking off the witchcraft curses. So. This is an extension of that, and uh, I'm glad the Holy Spirit released me to talk about this finally. You know, a lot of people, you know, hey, it's overtime. No, it's not. It's right on time. Holy Spirit tells me, you know, and I will, I will do what the Lord tells me to do at the right time, you know, when it's ready to be received. And uh, so we thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, right now. Just bless your people. I thank you, Father God, right now for those that have gone through this, Lord. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your love in Jesus' name. And let them feel your peace in their minds in Jesus name thank you father God we praise you Lord in Jesus name amen and amen alrighty so tonight I'll be at crossroads for women in Phoenix doing ministry and tomorrow night prepare the way International Church in Phoenix and then uh, let's see Saturday uh, will be I can't remember. Beyond Freedom. And, um, well, wait a minute. I can find it. Uh, yeah, I'll be in Mesa. Be in Mesa, Arizona. I'm going to find the name of that. Uh, I would be at Freedom Gate Church, June 22nd at noon, it starts. June 25th, Crossroads for Women in Phoenix. June 26th, Prepare the Way International Church in Phoenix. June 30th, The River Church south of Tucson in Saharita, Arizona in the morning. And then the evening at six o'clock, I'll be at Love Fest Church International in Tempe, Arizona. And uh, it just goes on from there. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. So you can find it at restoredyourfreedom.com, my schedule, or go out to Restore Your Freedom on Facebook and find it there. Alrighty, well, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Love you guys, and uh, be restored to freedom in Christ. Amen and amen.